Hello and welcome back to Formula One for the ZX Spectrum from 1985, one of the earliest Formula One team management games. So in the first two parts, we've done 10 rounds of the championship. We've got six to go. We took control of Lotus. We hired Ayrton Senna and Nigel Mansell. Good lineup. However, bad cars. Because of reliability issues and lack of money, I've only been able to run Mansell's car all season long. Senna raced once and then has been on the sidelines ever since. To try and save money, I then sacked Senna and brought in Martin Brundle. He has yet to race, he's just had to sit on the sidelines in that broken car. Mansell has done okay, he's got points, quite a few sixth place finishes and one fourth place finish not too bad. So with the final six rounds looming upon us I've given myself three objectives to try and end the season. Easy objective, give Martin Brundle at least one race. It's the least I can do. Medium objective, try and get Mansell onto the podium. We finished fourth, there's no reason we can't go one better. And then finally the hard objective which is try not to finish last in the constructor standings. There's a reason why that's the hard objective. Let's finish the 1985 season. My name's Ash, this is The Outside Line. Okay, here we are, we are back in it, and we are on our post-race screen. Uh, I've got just over half a million in the bank. As you can see, Brundle's car is still in a state of disrepair because we've not touched it for ages. Mansell's car is not race worthy after the end of the last race, so we need to improve it. My strategy from the last part of the season was to just keep doing Mansell's car up and hopefully it would get good enough so he would bring us more points, more prize money. It was kind of working. The car was getting better. We got up to fourth. The problem I've got is I'm still here with two non-race worthy cars and only just over half a million. The thing I don't understand is the prize money. We got more prize money for finishing seventh in one race than we did when we finished fourth. So even though it would cost more money to run both cars, I'm guessing you'd also get more money if both cars were running in the first place. For this next race, I am just gonna stick with the strategy of just getting Mansell in. I'm gonna leave 100,000 in the bank just in case we get no prize money from this and I'm left with nothing, so we need a safety net. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. So power, improving doesn't seem to improve anything, so once again we press B to buy. 150,000 on power and chassis. And then I'm gonna spend 100,000 on a new crew. And just see, see if that gives us any form of efficiency other than just how quickly the little pit stop man goes. Okay, here we go, the German Grand Prix at Hockenheim, and we have rain with thunderstorms, full wet race to go into, so obviously let's press five for rain tires. Oh, and we have not qualified the best there. It's not an ideal position to be starting in, but beggars can't be choosers. Let's just see if we can hang on in the wet weather. So we are, I think in the minute, we are only one place off the points. Obviously Mansell's car, the black number six Lotus. So if we see number six on the leaderboard, we know that's, uh, that's good. Thing, oh, and uh, our Renier our new is retired, stalled after a spin. Drizzle and track is wet. Oh, and they're coming, so they're going in for the Inters then. The sky has turned from grey to blue. I've hit P to come in for a pit stop, so you know what? Why not? Let's uh, let's do it. Oh, I've forgotten what buttons move your guy because it's not the arrows. Crap, this isn't going to be good. Ah, there we go. That's that one. How do I move him side to side? Ooh, there we go. Right, N. There we go. Yes. Okay, we got it. Thing is, we usually come in so much with mechanical failures and. I think that hurts us as well in terms of not only in the race, but when we have to repair the car constantly. So fingers crossed, we've not had to come in for anything mechanical yet in this race, and we're 40 laps in. And in fact, that's it. 43 laps. Okay, we're not in the points, but for the first time ever, I think we've not had to come in. We Were we just overtaking someone then as well? Hang on, what's happened? Are we outside the points? Eighth. Eighth in the end. So start and prize money 75. Okay for sponsorship. That's pants. We've got less money. The crew has really taken a dip. 
I only had to do one pit stop. That's practically nothing compared to the thousands of other pit stops I've had to do this season. Right, I think it's strategy change time now. I think I want to try and get Martin Brundle's car going and see if that gives us more money just for getting both cars started. Okay, I'm going to spend 100,000 on Mansell's engine first of all. And that will get him up to about 40 odd percent efficiency. Okay, let's just. I'm going to spend 100,000 on Martin Brundle's car. And I'm going to spend 100,000 on his chassis. If this does not get him race worthy, it does just. So for the second time this season, both drivers will take part. A debut for Martin Brundle. Based on his stats and rating, he's going to be around the back. But if he can just get through the race, finish, and we'll deal with it from there. And we move on to the Austrian Grand Prix at the old Österreich ring, 51 laps. So this is for Brundle now. I've got to deal with both cars. So let's go with medium compound for Brundle. Um, we'll go aggressive with soft compound for Mansell. So Mansell's kind of mid-table, Brundle understandably at the back. Oh, well, that's nice. They're both, they're both together. Oh, but Mansell's gained there. So he's, okay, Mansell's still in the middle. That's all right. I'll take that for now. Mansell briefly on the leaderboard there, showing up in fifth and up to fourth. I'm not sure. Oh, down to sixth again. I'm not sure where this performance is. The car is only 29%. It's not incredible. Track report. Uh, drizzle on the track is wet. I'm going to hit P. And I'm going to have to presumably call a pit stop twice now to bring both cars in. I'm going to bring Mansell in first because he's higher up and has got the better chance of points. And I'm going to hit P again. And will that let me bring Brundle in? Okay, now I have to do his pit stop first. Right, so intermediates. I now know what buttons I'm pressing. And in comes Martin Brundle on his debut for Lotus. Oh, wow. Yeah. God, you know it's the difference with the slow crew, man. Oh my. Oh, come on. Oh dear. Oh, Martin, I'm sorry. I actually can't believe we've not had any mechanical issues to deal with yet. I know I'm tempting fate by constantly saying that I have, I have properly, <laughs> properly jinxed it now. I've completed the easy objective. I've given Martin Brundle a race. For the second race this season, both cars are in. Let's see if he can get both cars to finish at least as well. Heavy rain and puddles. So is that a wet, it is a wet weather definitely. Here we go. P, 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 P. Yeah, Mansell in first again. I hit P again, so hopefully it will call Brundle's pit stop straight away after this one. Here we go, here we go, we go, we go, we go. Oh, come on, man. Uh, five. Oh, <laughs> I've called the pit stop that late. Doesn't matter, checkered flags out. It's fine, I'll finish him on inters. Just get to the end, Martin. There we go. Yeah, seventh and eighth for Mansell and Brundle. Last of the non-retired cars once again. It feels like a step back. I know it's good to have two cars on, but it just feels like a step back because we're not anywhere near. We're just not performing. So 150,000. So we get double the amount of start because both of them have started. The expenses and wages haven't gone up though. So that's something. Again, we're down to 1% with Brundle. Based on that, I am reverting to my one car strategy. Thanks, Martin. We will call on you if we need you. Don't go anywhere. In fact, you can't go anywhere because you're under contract. So I've got 341, right, 150,000 power, 150,000 on car. Leave the crew where they are. Where does that get us? A little better than it was before. Right, I'm expecting a decent improvement on the chassis if I spend 150,000 on it. That sh and then again, it's not because I'm improving on it. It's because I bought a new one. But every time I pressed in I for improve, it just didn't do anything. Okay, back down to one car. Dutch Grand Prix, Zandvoort, 71 laps, constant drizzle and heavy clouds. So I'm assuming we're going to be on Inters for this one. What a very wet season 1985 is. And we are down towards the back again. 
I did put this on Expert thinking, ah, it's from 1985. I've got a 21st century brain. I think we can probably kiss not finishing last in the Constructors' Championship goodbye. So I think what I'm going to do with... Ooh, okay, he's okay. Nigel, I swear to God, mate, I will punch the moustache right off your face. Do you understand? Keep it on the f track. What I think I need to do is put my remaining time and energy in these last few races just to see if I can get Mansell into a podium. That would be it. That's that's season saving. A highlight for me if we can get him on the podium. Quite a few retirements as I speak to you. In comes Mansell for engine sick. It was always going to happen. So we are, I think we're seventh at the minute by the looks of it. Again, just on the edge of points. Uh, actual piss is being taken. I've just bought him a new engine. It. Look at that. Only six cars finished. So at the minute, Derek Warwick leads from Keki Rosberg. McLaren in control and the constructors. Decent amount of sponsorship money though from that for some reason. Decent amount of chassis. Like the chassis hasn't really lost much. Power is, is obviously yeeted because it blew up. I've spent the whole season plowing money into Nigel Mansell's car thinking that he will get into the points and be great. Yet yeah, he's crashed, spun, blown up, gearbox failures, just isn't quicker than them. Clearly what this game likes is not logic. <laughs> I'm going to get both of them racing again. That's extra money in the bank because they're at least both starting. Hopefully more sponsorship money because they're both participating. Because we've already proven that actually getting in the points doesn't give you more money. So it's clearly something else. Martin Brundle is about to get back out there and he's going to have actually driven for us more times than Ayrton Senna did when he was employed by me. Proper Mickey Mouse organisation this, Jesus. So we're only going to have 33,000 left in the bank. It's risky, but we are coming towards the end of the season and I, I have tried to be sensible and clever, or at least what I think was clever. Sod it now. Caution is being thrown to the wind. We have three races to go. Round 14 is the Italian Grand Prix at Monza. 51 laps dry, but once again, rain is forecast. We are going to go hard tyres for Martin Brundle uh, and mm, soft tyres for Mansell. Go aggressive with him. And so <laughs> Martin Brundle has outqualified Nigel Mansell. <sighs> We are both the last two cars on track at the minute. Now, because of all the mechanical failures that have brought me in for pit stops, I still don't know if the tyres just wear on this and I've actually got to judge when to bring them in. Because I've got Mansell on soft tyres. If he happens to not have a mechanical failure, is he is his tyres going to go off? Is he going to spin and crash? Do I need to bring him in of my like, own volition? Oh, he stalled after. I think the answer would have been yes. I should have probably brought him in so he didn't spin. Him stalling it is, is on is on him. What a surprise, the rain has arrived. So remarkably, Martin Brundle is last man standing. Just let's not have a double DNF. Let's just, just finish Martin. Yeah, I realized I, I said I was gonna put all my energy into getting Mansell a podium and then abandon that. <laughs> that plan wasn't working. It wasn't necessarily going to get me a podium. So maybe just having both cars in. Maybe I just need to suffer the ignominy of being rubbish for quite a while. But rubbish with two cars, rather than being semi-competent with one. Keki Rosberg wins for Ferrari at Monza. Be a popular one. Incredibly, Martin Brundle has finished ahead of someone who hasn't retired. Just outside the points. Fair play to you, Martin. That's why I like the guy. Okay, so what's our efficiency? So back down to one for Brundle. Sponsorship. <laughs> Why has we got no sponsorship? We've got no money. 
So I've got two races left now. Okay, I'm going to change my strategy again. Because, like every great strategist, I am simply adapting my plan and my strategy when I realise it's not working. Let's ignore the fact that I'm basically U-turning every five seconds. I'm just following the blueprint set out by the UK government for dealing with a pandemic. Just make a decision, then make the opposite decision, then make the opposite decision to that again and see how it goes. It's working out well, I think. So once again, I'm going to spend 100,000 on engine and chassis. I've got no faith in pressing the I button to improve anything because the couple of times I've done that, the bar hasn't moved. So I now don't want to improve anything. I'm just buying new stuff every race, which seems counterintuitive. Anyway, 59,000 left, two races to go. We're back down to one car. Oi, oi. We are up for the Europe Grand Prix. Okay, broken cloudy sky, but dry. Bet it, bet it rains, because that's just what it's done <laughs> all season long. Doesn't matter what game I'm doing it on at the minute, I just seem to be all about the wet races. That's a reference to my F195 playthrough, by the way, if you didn't know. Go check that out. That's fun. That doesn't make me want to hurt myself. Actually, sometimes it does, but... See, after 20 or so laps, I might bring him in if we've not had to come in for technical issues just because of the threat of tyre wear. It's remarkable. I've done almost a full season and I've learnt almost nothing <laughs> about the game. There's still so much I'm unsure of. Okay, I'm going to make the call. I'm pressing P. He's coming in anyway. Gearbox problems. <laughs> As if by magic. Um, hard compound. Let's see if we can run him on a long stint. Go, 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 go. Oh, forget it. Oh, I'd... crap. I don't want to bring him in again. Um, uh... There we go. I press car number five, because that's Martin Brundle's number. Lafitte has retired. So incredibly, we're now only one place away from the points. It might be a bit much to ask for another car to retire just before the end of the race. You know, sometimes my daughter watches these videos or sees clips of them and usually sees when it goes wrong. And she always says, you're an amateur, daddy's a loser. Which is funny for everyone. I'm just thinking, I'm just hearing that going around in my head now. Daddy's a loser. She says it with such joy as well. <laughs> oh, Renny Arnu has crashed and we are sick. As if by magic thinking about how much of a loser we are we will get we'll get a point so we pick up a lone point oh so we got 145,000 for starting so we only started one car but I got 100 and oh I don't know I don't understand the money it's the final race of the season do I just spend everything 150,000 pounds on a new chassis because oh no, excuse you, 150. Race worthy. Then I've got 109,000 pounds left. It's the end of the season. I don't think any of them deserve to celebrate, so I'm not gonna leave any money in the bank. No end of year drinks party for you. Awful. So I'm gonna spend the last of that trying something out. Like I said, I've got the option to buy or improve, and every time I press improve, nothing happens. So I'm gonna test the theory one last time. I'm gonna press I to improve rather than buy and I'm going to spend the remainder of my budget and we're going to see if this line actually moves I don't understand <laughs> okay I don't get it final race of the season Portugal Estoril broken cloudy sky but dry bet it rains gonna go soft compound we're last <laughs> Yeah, I think it's about time it was the last race of the season, actually, because this is all, it's all gone awfully. So, okay, clearly, pressing I, and sp I still need to spend a minimum amount to obviously improve things. So maybe I need to spend at least 100,000 to improve. So it's the last race of the season, and I'm now thinking, actually, I could have been improving parts and getting them further up rather than buying new ones every race. 
but because of what happened in the first couple of videos where I pressed I and nothing happened, I've just written off improving anything and I've wasted all that money. I have bought 16 new engines <laughs> in a season. If that was modern Formula One, I'd have like a 20 million place grid penalty. I'm the worst team boss in the world. Ferrari, if you're watching though, I am available. All things considered, even though I am frustrated at this game because I don't get it and I'm not good at it, I still genuinely really like it. <laughs> Considering it's from 1985, extremely low resolution graphics, but the depth of it is actually really enjoyable. I'm probably overthinking it. The game is probably a lot simpler than that because it's not got AI to the level that modern games do. But the amount of depth it creates in its simplicity of just trying to get a strategy and think about how you're going to do things. It's really good. It, I genuinely cannot recommend it enough. I am playing this on an emulator. It's a free online emulator. I'm going to put a link to where I've played this game in the description below if you want to give it a go. I'd love to know if you do try it and how you get on. It would be great to hear. As we are in sixth now, me not paying attention and we're doing quite well. <laughs> That's, clearly that's the sign that I should not be a team boss. Just go on guys, just drive, you'll be fine. So for the final race of the season, we do at least pick up another solitary point. So of my objectives, there was get Brundle a race. We got him two and he had a decent one actually, to be fair. Get Mansell on the podium. No, not finish last in the constructors. Well, to be fair, we've just scored a point. So let's see if that's maybe mathematically pumped us up ahead of Williams. N no, it hasn't. Damn, so close. So there we go. Final standings. Keki Rosberg wins by two points from Derek Warwick. Nicky Lauda in third. PK was leading for such a long time. And then he got injured. Missed the rest of the season. Uh, McLaren win the Constructors with 100 points. Ferrari in second. Uh, Lotus participated. Which is great. I'm going to hit Y to that. Yeah, why not? Start the tape, then press any key. Oh, oh I love this l l classic loading screen. I mean, there is no tape, to be fair. It's just the game, so I don't know what's going to happen now. This is how it ends. <laughs> is this it? And we're not even going to get to see, see my setup for the new season. Oh, oh, oh dear. Oh, oh dear. Oh, it's... Ah, uh, and on that bombshell, <laughs> it's time to end. Thank you so much for watching this little mini series going back to 1985. I will be revisiting um, not this game, but the ZX Spectrum for another Formula One adventure very soon. If you do have a go at this game, like I say, link for the emulators in the description. And uh, yeah, if you have success, I'd love to hear about it. Um, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time when I'll be back in F195 for the German Grand Prix and uh, hopefully I'll see you for that one. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.